Today we're going to take a look at the latest hot trend among art collectors, Aboriginal art from Australia. My guest today is Sandra Ellis, who is the owner and curator of the Pine Lake Museum of Aboriginal Art. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Firstly, why do you think Aboriginal art has become so popular? Well, one reason is that it's very old. The Aboriginal people they're the original native Australians. They live far from civilization and they've had very little contact with outsiders. So they've maintained their culture and their art for generations. You can go to remote areas in Australia and see rock carvings that date back um, at least 30,000 30, years. And you can look at the paintings today and these are done by the direct descendants of the prehistoric people. And you'll see the same images, the same symbols used in the art today. They've survived for thousands of years. I understand the art is connected to the belief system of the people in some way. Yes. To understand the art, you need to know a little bit about the beliefs of the Aboriginal people. All of the paintings refer to what they call the dream time. And what is that? The dream time refers to the time when, according to the Aboriginal people, the world was created and mythical figures or spirits and animals wandered around the earth. The people have stories about these figures and what they did. They didn't have a written language, so the stories were passed down from generation to generation. And the old people use the art as a way of telling the stories to the younger people. That's why most of the artists are older people. They've memorised the stories. Through the art, the people kept the stories alive. What does a typical Aboriginal painting look like? Well, you have different local styles, but what you generally see is lots of, lots of lines and dots and circles. So the effect is quite abstract and usually quite colourful, but you'll notice shapes and symbols that recur again and again. For example, there's a snake, which may represent water, or a river snaking through the desert. Other figures might represent animals or people, some paintings work almost like maps. They show a particular place with water holes and hills and camps even. These kinds of paintings are about a dreamtime story that happened in a particular place. But uh, some of them also give information about the place, like locations of water holes and trails and so on. I see. But the important thing is that for the artist, the art itself, the product, is really not important. It's the doing of the art, the process, that's important. Traditionally, the paintings were done as part of a ceremony, and they were done as body painting or on the ground, and then they were washed away. So they were temporary. It's only recently, since the 1970s in fact, that the art has ever been done on canvas or paper, so that it can be kept and collected. But it's still the process, really, that matters to the artists. And yet their work now sells for tens of thousands of dollars. Hundreds of thousands, yes. One major painting sold for nearly $500,000 recently. There are artist cooperatives all over Australia, and collectors come from all over the world now. But 30 years ago, you couldn't give the paintings away. It's only been recently that the art and the culture really has come to be recognised and valued for what it is. 